What's up guys, Coach Has here. We need to have a little talk. Today, I wanna to do a little talk about hard sparring. Should you be doing it? What could you be doing instead? If you're going to be doing it, what needs to be in place to maximize safety? We're gonna just generally have a bit of a chat about hard sparring. Starting with the reason why 90% of the time, for 90% of you, you should not be hard sparring. But let's let's really first start with defining what I mean by hard sparring. Hard sparring basically means that when you're sparring, you're treating it like the fight. You're hitting as hard as you would if you were actually in the fight. You're not pulling back the power on your technique. And even if you are, you're pulling it back only a very little bit. Now, there's an argument for hard sparring to the body that there's less risk involved. We can come onto that a little bit later. But the real focus of it is trauma to the head. And in particular, there's been a lot of studies on something called CTE. CTE, which stands for Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy. Near enough? It's a neurodegenerative disease linked to repeated brain trauma. In combat sports, you'll often hear it referred to as being punch drunk. And common symptoms for it are mood swings, changes in behavior, slurring of words, struggling with the ability to speak and string a sentence together, and it can develop into even worse diseases such as dementia later on in life. And the big thing that most people don't understand or know about CTE is it comes later. So let's say that you've been sparring hard up till 30, and at 30 you stop. It doesn't mean that at 40 you won't start showing signs of CTE. It's degenerative, so over time, you start seeing the symptoms even if you stopped the behavior. Now, one of the big issues comes with diagnosing this, and the reason that that's difficult is it can't be done whilst you're still alive. So you can't go get a brain scan where they'd be able to see signs of CTE. In fact, the only way they've been able to tell is by studying the brains of people who have died where they can see the physical representations of CTE on the brain. Obviously, this relates back to our sports because of head trauma. Things like getting punched in the head, or if you're more into a grappling sport, getting slammed on your head. Anything that causes a concussion has the potential to cause CTE. So this is a serious disease with real serious implications on your long-term health. Now, for any of you that take part in martial arts as a hobby, and it's a great hobby, I don't want to deter anyone from martial arts, and in particular, from sparring, but it is really important to take this into consideration and think that is your hobby worth affecting your long-term mental health? And as someone who does this for a living, I'll tell you, no, it's not. But then other than doing a no-touch martial art, which I really don't recommend, what can we do instead of hard sparring so that we can still get the most out of that training session? And the answer is pretty obvious, light sparring. More than light sparring, what I actually mean is technical sparring, focused on technique. A sparring that's focused on understanding the mechanics of the technique, of the defenses, of the footwork, the guard, everything that goes into it. Sparring at a pace that becomes more of a game rather than trying to rip your opponent's head off. Now, as someone who's been coaching fighters for over 10 years, I can tell you that this is easier said than done because this is what happens. You get Chuck and Larry, Chuck and Larry touch gloves to start technically sparring and light sparring and Chuck and Larry start hitting each other. Chuck hits a little bit harder, Larry replies in kind, Chuck hits a little bit harder on top of that and before you know it, we're one minute into the round and these two are swinging at each other. This happens all the time. It's very, very common and as a coach, it's then your job to step in, pull them apart, calm them back down, bring them back down to earth, reset them, let them go again. And nine times out of 10, there's no bad intention behind either of these guys. In fact, both of them, normally when you separate them, they're smiling and they're laughing because they're having a good time. They just get so caught up in it. But that's where it gets a little bit tricky. It's a little bit similar to smoking, going out smoking and drinking. You go out and you're having a good time in the moment. You're enjoying standing there with your friends, having a smoke, and you're not really thinking about the long-term repercussions of your behavior. And someone comes over and tries to stop you and you kind of look at them and go, look, we're just having a good time. What's the issue? But therein lies the issue is, I, as a coach, it's our job to look out for your long-term health, your long-term well-being. So we know the effects, we've read the research, we know the stuff, so we have to step in and stop you there. And hopefully by me sharing this video and a couple of you seeing it, hopefully this helps provide more information to you so that you're better informed when you step on the mats to spark. 
Now, all of that being said, is there a place for hard sparring for anyone? Yes, there is. But understand that I'm talking to very few of you right now. The people I am talking to right now are people who fight professionally, as in the fighting they do pays them, and that money that it pays them is how they feed their family and how they keep a roof on their head. And these people who are hard sparring and are using it to pay for their bills are currently in a camp and are building up to a fight in the near future. Now the reason that these guys might need to do some hard sparring is because they need to experience the fight at full speed, at full pace. This is very difficult to do when you're pulling back your power. I can punch real fast, real controlled, but I know that it's not my maximum. And if you're going to go into a ring or into a cage with someone who's gonna be punching at you with bad intentions, with the intention of knocking you out, then you do need to experience that so that you know exactly how fast you need to be moving. Your feet, your guard, your head movement, throwing your technique, etc. Also, if you've never been hit hard and the first time you get hit is in the first five seconds of round number one, that's going to really mess with your head. So you need to experience this in a safe environment such as the training room so that when it happens in the real fight, it's not going to break you down or terrify you. But again, this should only be done in camp in the run up to the fight. So it's a couple of weeks. If we look at the span of the year, let's say you fight three or four times in that year. It means that you're only hard sparring for six to eight weeks of the entire year. Thus minimizing the chances, not stopping, but minimizing the chances of you sustaining long term damage. Now, if you are one of these few or you're just choosing to ignore all my advice and you're going to hard spar anyway, I implore you to at least do the following. One, obviously have your gum shield in, but two, wear a head guard. Now, I know head guards are not designed to stop brain trauma. If you didn't know about this, watch my video that talks about head guards. I'll do a follow up video on that soon. They're mostly designed to stop you getting scratched and cut up and get your ears busted and all the rest of it. However, you can't tell me that adding a layer of protection to your head doesn't do anything against impact. It just does. Next, wear the largest gloves possible. 16 ounce, 18 ounce if you can find them. And of course that goes for your partner as well. And lastly, have a third party, a third person in the room who is not sparring. Their job is like a referee's job in the fight. It's there to stop you when things get too much because your ego will push you through things that it shouldn't push you through. You might get sparked, you might get bright lights flashing in your head, but the toughness in you will tell you to cover up, push in and carry on. But at that moment, that's already early onset concussion. You need someone who can step in pull you apart, separate you, and call an end to the session at that point. You need someone there whose testosterone isn't up through the roof, who's not pumped full of adrenaline, who can keep the situation calm. All of this is something to really consider when you're joining a school or joining a gym. Make sure you go and watch some of their sparring. Make sure you see it before you sign up because everyone's got a very different, what we call sparring culture. I have trained all over the world with loads of different clubs in loads of different disciplines, Muay Thai, boxing, kickboxing, karate, taekwondo, and everywhere I've been has had a very different attitude to their sparring. Some I've really liked, some not so much. Now I came up in the 90s and in the 90s, everyone hard sparred. It was very difficult to find a gym that was into technical sparring. And even to, to be honest, I hard sparred all the way through the 90s, early 2000s, before I got the information and really understood what it was potentially doing to me. Things like black eyes, nosebleeds, these aren't necessarily a sign of hard sparring. You can get very lightly hit on the nose. The, the tissue around your eyes is very soft. It bruises really easy. So if you see someone with a black eye or a busted nose, it's not an indication that they're necessarily sparring really hard. It could be, it's possible, but don't let that be the deciding factor. Watch it for the impact. Watch it for the pace. Watch for the way they respond if and when someone does get a little bit hurt or hit a little bit too hard. Do they stop the match? Do they check on them? Does someone come over and provide first aid? All right, guys, I think I'll hold it there. I think I've gone on long enough. I hope that didn't come over across too lectury or moany at you. I'm really just trying to look out for your well-being and your health and safety 
please continue to enjoy and train martial arts. Please continue to enjoy and train striking. Just do it in a safe and responsible way so that you can have the long-term benefits of it and maintain your mental and physical well-being. Guys, if there's anything you wanna see me make a video on, please comment it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button, hit subscribe. New videos coming out every week and I will see you on the next one.